I'm bringing you this pure Bloodlands build, which is absolutely fantastic. It's super, super strong. Post patch, guys. This is a really, really fun and cool build. It kind of mimics playing uh, Bone Spear in some ways, but it definitely is a little bit weaker. But overall, this thing looks like a ball lightning build with so many damage numbers on the screen the build is very very fast and we're going to be creating a lot a lot of blood orbs is consuming them and dealing so many blood lances it's just going to be insane they're going to be flying all over the place so we're going to break down everything you need for the build the gear and the paragon board to help you out in this early end game we are only level 90 and we're still not finished with the paragon board so let's get right into it so this is a blood lance build this is pure bloodlance we are going to be rocking nothing but bloodlance you can see that we still don't even have a basic on here because our essence regeneration is insanely high so let's go <clears throat> excuse me let's go over the scales and what you need so we are doing hemorrhage we're doing hemorrhage into enhanced hemorrhage uh if you are going to use a basic in this build which you can uh, because you could swap out decrepify as a manual cast to just use it as your aura here from your raffle heart I would definitely recommend getting Acolyte's Hemorrhage to help, but you're not going to need it. But you're going to start here with the points here. Just go down to our core skills. We are maxing out Bloodlance into Supernatural Bloodlance. So that way on our sixth one, we're all about overpowering. And it spawns a Blood Orb under the first enemy hit. We are an overpower Bloodlance build, which is really, really strong. Thanks to the update, they fixed and perfectly balanced. So we got three ranks in here and one rank in Unliving Energy for more damage. Uh, three points into Hued flesh, flesh, so on a lucky hit, we have a chance to uh, create a corpse. Then we got one point into Blood Mist, into Ghastly Blood Mist as our Get Out of Jail free card. This bill, or this uh, defensive skill, or not defensive skill, but our Corpse and Max skill is really good to help leave us more and more corpses, and it's our only way to become unstoppable, which is very important. Next, we're taking one point into Corpse Explosion. This is mainly just for our heart, which is going to be procking our corpse skills down below and is allow us to trigger our grim harvest for more uh, essence which is very important which is why our essence is always going to be full and then fuel by death our nine percent a multiplicative increased damage for six seconds should always be live next we come down to our curse skills we're taking three points in death's embrace for close enemies for more damage three points in amplify damage because everything is going to be cursed and of course to crepify into aberrant decrepify because our lucky hit chance is going to be so high that it's going to help reduce our ultimate skill here which is blood wave by a lot now down into our corpse and max skills some more we're taking uh, corpse tendrils down into play corpse tendrils this is going to help give us some more vulnerability however if you don't care necessarily about the 20 percent uh increased damage from vulnerability which i suggest you do care about it you could always do blighted which has a chance to give you more blood orbs however we're gonna, the majority of our blood orbs are going to come from our blood wave ultimate. So I think the vulnerability damage here is just much better with how often we're going to be casting uh, corpse tendrils. Next, into our blood skills, we're taking one point into gruesome mending. Uh, we're taking three points into uh, colicid blood. While we're healthy, we deal more damage. And then ties of bloods max this, max this out for overpower damage, which is 30%. If we're healthy, which should always be healthy, we'll have double damage. Now we come down to our ultimate skills. Like I said, we're taking Blood Wave. The reason this build is so good with Blood Orbs is because Blood Wave uh, gives us three Blood Orbs as it travels. But into our gear piece here, Blood Wave fires two additional waves. So that gives us three waves of Blood, uh, or three Blood Waves that are each dropping three Blood Orbs, which is nine Orbs. So we get a huge damage boost there, boost to our HP, and we just deal an insane amount of damage. Next, we got three ranks into an Inspiring Leader. While we're healthy, we get attack speed. Uh, stand alone for more damage reduction because we have no minions. Then Memento Mori for even more uh, sacrifice bonus to Skeletal Warriors and Mages. Then in our key passive, of course, we're taking Wrath of Vigor. We increase our life. After being healthy for 12 seconds, our next blood skill automatically overpowers. Into our Book of the Dead, our sacrifices are going to be Skirmishers. Uh, with crit strike chance however there's is there is one other one that you could choose to do if you don't care about crit striking you could have the 15 percent non-physical resistance i don't think this is good yet maybe this this will change after resistance is work but right now we want crit chance mages cold we want the uh increased damage to vulnerability however i messed this up and this is actually needs to be on 
bone for the 40% increased overpower damage. Really dumb there. Golems, we want the increased crit strike chance. However, on this build, blood is also very good, which will help with overpower damage because our health will actually be higher. Go back and forth on these two. Um, I still kind of like the crit chance here, but uh, totally up to you. If you really wanted, felt like you had attack speed issues, you could go here. But uh, the blood one or even the um, the bone iron one for more crit chance is just really good. I've been going back and forth. I, I like this one for more damage. However, the 10% life is actually pretty good. All right, now before we get into the gear, we're going to talk about a few things, um, a few issues with this build. This is a lucky hit chance build, so we do uh, want to proc lucky hit chance as much as possible, okay? Our lucky hit chance bonus right now is 41%, which is actually really good. So on our lance, on average, every other lance should proc our lucky hit. The reason that we have lucky hit is because of lucky hit chance to replenish 19% of our resource as well as another 10% here. And then we get lucky hit bonuses in our passives. So on the gear pieces, here we go. We got disobedience for more armor. We got explosive mist. This one is optional. You actually don't have to have this one. If you feel like you're a little squishy, you could definitely swap this out for might. So on basic skills, you could get more damage reduction. That would make you have to drop Decrepify for the basic attack. But that is an option. There's also other defensive options if you really, really want them. Uh, but Blood Mist seems to work pretty good here to help detonate corpses. Uh, and then Core Gwills or Gore Quills here. Casting Blood Lance consumes the Blood Orbs. And then has uh, Conjures Lances from them to deal more damage. This is actually really, really good. So that way when we cast our Blood Wave and we make all these, we can actually stand back and just allow our, our Blood Lances to actually consume them. Which means that when we get into our Paragon board here and when we have stuff where you get, let's say, 10% more damage when you consume a Blood Orb, we don't actually have to walk over it. The Gore Quills is going to consume that Blood Orb, which is going to give us that bonus. So this is very important for the build. Next, we have uh, Doom, because consuming a corpse has a chance to give us a blood orb, which is very good. We're always going to get corpse explosion and or blood mist to consume corpses, which will drop us blood orbs. Very important. And this is um, really, really good for the build. Next, we got Wind Strikers here. You have a few options in the boot. On crit strikes, the move speed is very, very good. Um, you could also do Ghost Walkers if you really felt like it. You could also do Exploiters here. Exploiters is really good against... Um, unstoppable monsters like bosses because this build does struggle just a little bit against solo monsters or bosses so exploiters could also be really good for this build and our weapon we're doing hungry blood each cast will do an additional blood lance which is really good on our uh, offhand we have rathma's chosen whenever our blood skills overpower we gain 50 percent attack speed for four seconds we're always going to be overpowering i at a minimum every sixth attack if not more. So having the 50% attack speed really helps this build a lot. Uh, potent blood here for when we consume blood orbs. This also gives us essence back to keep it at full. Then we got tidal loop. This is what allows our blood waves to fire two additional. We don't actually do not care about the, the damage because we're not doing damage from blood wave. We're doing damage from blood lance. So we just want this to create the blood orbs. However, one option that you could do here is do accelerating for even more attack speed. But so far, I found that once you have a perfect uh, Rathmus Chosen, it works just fine. And then, of course, in our necklace, we're doing Grasping Veins for more crit chance and more damage. You could swap both of these if you really wanted more attack speed. You put Rathmus Chosen in the Amulet and Grasping Vines down here. I would encourage you, though, if you do do that, to have a max Grasping Veins to put down here. So that way, it's not too bad. Uh, rubies in everything, armor and gear, because we want overpower damage. Now, our Malignant Hearts of Choice. We have messed around with a few of these. However, there is one that we guaranteed have to have, and that's this Vicious Heart. So Walking Near Corpses automatically activates and consumes them, which allows our stuff to be automatically cast. You have to have this one. Our next one that we chose to have is our Brutal Heart, which gives us our uh, Curse here for Decrepify. However, I have found that as much as I auto-cast Decrepify, you, you may or may not need this. However, when you are just mainly attacking and enemies are in your close radius here, it is very good to curse them. So that is an option. We are not running any Wrathful Hearts. Um, and then the last one that we have been testing is you gain 75% crit strike damage, but our non-crits deal less damage. We crit so often in this build 
that the damage is actually really, really good. And we have very few times where we're not critting. So it's, it's very good. However, there is options that you can change. You can keep the brutal heart here and then put a wrathful heart in the amulet. And the one I would pick is the one where you cycle through where you have 24% increased attack speed. And then after 20 kills, it switches after 20 kills, it switches again. However, through testing, I kind of like this more than anything, but you do have some options there. So real quick, before we go over the Paragon board, I'm just going to highlight and showcase this build. It's really, really fun. So the idea here is to curse our enemies. We're going to throw a blood wave and then we're just going to annihilate absolutely everything on the field. And you see everything just get totally consumed. We're very, very fast. You curse everything to get our blood waves back. And you can see how fast that that actually goes down. Curse everything again. And you see we don't actually have to cast Blood Mist or anything unless we really need to. Only in a pinch. I'm just showcasing this now. We got the pull on Tendrils. And now Blood Wave's back. Throw it again. We deal insane amounts of damage on this build. And we move really fast. We do have the, the slow, slowing projectiles, which kind of sucks in this dungeon. But you can see how fast everything just gets deleted. And you can see how quick our blood, our blood land, or excuse me, blood wave gets reset. Because everything is just cursed. And our lucky hit chance is so high. We're going to reset this blood wave all the time, nonstop. We cast it so much, right? Just curse everything. Everything gets cursed. Super easy to play. It's a very, very, very fun build. And with the auto cast of cor or, um, Corpse Centrals, everything gets pulled and we just deal insane amounts of damage. So that is the build, guys. Let's go over the Paragon board and everything that you need. Yeah, I mean, that one's super high. Okay. So over the Paragon board, we are going to go over this very, very quick. Starting board, we are going to go up the right-hand side for even more damage and max life with corresponding nodes. Our first one is going to be Blood Drinker because this is a blood build. Blood Orbs also fortify us, which is very important. We're taking Preservation for more armor and intelligence with corresponding nodes. Knowledge for more damage and intelligence. Board 2, we're taking Blood Begets Blood. And it's going to be our very first legendary um, node that we're taking. Blood Orbs grant 5 times increased damage up to 15% which is very good. We're taking um, aggression for max overpower damage with corresponding nodes, as well as invigorated for more damage when we pick up a node. This is also what I mentioned earlier about when our blood lance consumes an orb, we gain even more damage uh, while that happens for eight seconds. Our glyph in the second one is embittered. As we're healthy, we deal even more damage and we have a huge pot increase when we pop one. Then we are going to take, um, we actually should be taking blood empowered here. Why don't we have blood empowered? That's weird. In our third board, we're taking Flesh Eater. It's our second node. Consuming five corpses gives us increased damage. We're going to be taking Stifle for more damage against injured enemies and crit strike damage. We're taking Targeted for more damage against elites. And then our Glyph on the third board is going to be Essence for even more damage. And then we do even more crits damage when we're healthy, which should be all the time. And our fourth and final board here in the early to late Early game is uh, we're going to be taking Scent of Death. As well as there are two corpses uh, nearby, we get damage reduction. When there's none, we do more damage. However, there's always going to be corpses. So the damage reduction here is actually really good. We're taking Corrective for more crit strike damage and potion healing. Then we're taking a Ruin for more damage against healthy enemies and uh, crit strike damage. We're taking Deathbringer for more damage against injured enemies with corresponding knowns of both of these. Then our Glyph of Choice is going to be Sacrificial. It's going to give a big bonus to each of the nodes that I'm going to show you, but we get increased damage while we have no minions. We're taking Preservation for more armor and intelligence with corresponding nodes, as well as uh, Death Marked, more damage against injured enemies and intelligence with corresponding nodes. Um, that is the Paragon board, guys. We still have a little bit more to finish, but this is uh, Bloodlance. However, there's still a lot of options with this build. Well, you could definitely drop Blood Wave and do uh, Bone Storm. Bone Storm is very strong in this build. But yeah, that is the Blood Lance build, guys. Uh, this is an endgame build. You have a lot of options here to swap out. This build is very, very fun to play and a very, very strong option if you want to do something that's a little bit different for the Necromancer post-patch. So like the video, guys. Comment down. Like, tell me what you guys think. And don't forget to subscribe. And as always, stay gaming. And I'll see you in the next one.
Peace.